Hi, I'm John with Orange Mod Works, and in this video, we are going to install the Core Retaliator slash Recon Mark II hybrid system. First things first, I have a prepped blaster here. All of the screws have been removed, and all of the internals have been removed. Uh, keep in mind, make sh you don't want your accessory tooth to pop out. I've already removed this one, and I'm going to now set this shell aside, and we will prep the kit. So hopefully, when you opened your kit, you dumped everything into this box. So here you have everything you need, and you will also need a Phillips and small flathead. So I'm going to take the two orange barrel pieces and just pop them together. There is a uh, slot up here that fits the top of the barrel, so it only goes in one way, and it looks like this. Once you have that done, you can set it aside, take out your bolt sled, make sure it's all pinned nicely, and the small O-ring. I'm going to set the uh, box of parts aside so we can focus on each step. So I have the small O-ring and the bolt sled and breech assembly. This small O-ring pops onto the back, just like so. It doesn't take a lot of force. Next, I'm going to take the plunger tube, the collar, large O-ring, plunger, and the other large O-ring. I'm going to start with the tube. So inspect your plunger tubes for sharp edges. There's a little bit of a burr in these, but it's not, uh, not a big deal. You can go ahead and install the kits. If you want, you can take a screwdriver, sandpaper, anything hard, and just go along the inside here and smooth out that burr. It's not 100% necessary, but it uh, does make the part smoother. So I'm just gonna do that on both sides. You don't have to use a flathead screwdriver. I'm not actually using the blade of the screwdriver. You can just use any you know hardened piece of metal and just go on, you're just flattening out. There's just a very slight burr. So once that's done, we're going to start with the collar. The O-ring slips right onto it, like so. And then the plunger. The O-ring goes on, like so. Now we're ready to grease everything up. Take your tube of grease, open it up, and use the opposite end of the cap to punch it open. Like that. And now we're going to take we're going to start with the breech. So you just put a little dab right there and just run it with your finger. You don't need a lot here. That's actually probably too much, but that's fine. And what's left on your finger, you just go ahead and run it on the inside of this collar. That'll make things easier the first time you put your blaster together because the fit between these two parts the collar in the breech is pretty tight for a good seal during firing. All right, next we have this aluminum plunger, uh, plunger body. It's completely cleaned. It's been degreased uh, from the manufacturer, so you need to put a lot of grease on the inside. So I'm going to put a pea-sized bit on this end and a pea-sized bit on this end. I'm going to spread that around the, the lip. I'm going to go and spread it deeper on both sides. You don't have to go all the way uh, and meet in the middle because the O-ring will uh, spread that. So it looks something like this. I've got about an inch wide uh, greased section here and an inch, inch wide greased section there. And I'm going to grab a paper towel to keep the dust clean set everything <coughs> on that and we're going to grease the collar just lightly and then we're going to put a little bit more on the plunger Ooh. because this is going to be moving and it will lose it will deposit some of the grease that we put on here as you use the kit <clears throat> right, 
paper towels are handy. Okay, so take the collar, pop it in. It is pretty tight, so you may have to gently sort of twist it on. And this piece is designed to stay put. So it should be completely flush with the plunger body. If you see any gaps, that could be because the O-ring has stretched and is sort of barely holding it in. Go ahead and take the whole thing out and then put it back in if you see gaps. But this looks good. I'm gonna take the plunger and spread that grease layer. There's very little resistance. If you want to check your seal, you can go ahead and plug one end and pull that. You can see that is a perfect seal. As long as you hold this uh, concentric with the tube, you get a good seal. If you put it to one side and try to pull it out, you'll notice there's no seal. If you hold it centered, and that is sealed. And here we'll take the breech, pop it in, and just leave it like that. So let's set this aside. Cap your grease, put that back in the box, and now it's time to start working with the shell. So this kit is compatible with the Retaliator and the Recon Mark II, so you can use a follow along for either blaster. They are The installation process is exactly the same. Uh, the Recon Mark II just has two minor differences, and I'll go over that after we get this Retaliator squared away. So. Open up your shell, don't lose any bits. Okay, first, you're gonna take your barrel assembly and you have these two holes here. They're gonna go onto these pegs and you have these screw holes here will line up with these here. Um, you can screw this down. Your blaster, when you remove the uh, dart tooth assembly, there'll be two screws here. You can use those or not. It doesn't really matter as far as this kit is concerned. So we're gonna slide the slide back and take the entire breech and plunger assembly. And I'm going to line up the bolt sled first. So these holes on the bolt sled fit onto these pegs on the slide. And as you're doing that, you'll see a little silicone or rubber uh, bumper here. Some retaliators have it, some don't and between there's some differences in retaliator shells so they might have different braces up in the front but basically this lip here this edge is going to line up behind these and that's what holds your plunger assembly in place you can see that this shell has been used rather heavily it's a little bit thrashed but it's still going strong so we're going to line up the bolt sled first bring it forward and as it brings as it's dragged forward, the plunger will fall into place, and it is behind that brace. So from here, I'm going to hold this down firmly and slide this all the way forward, locking the breech into the barrel. Make sure everything is in a straight line, nothing's popped out. Make sure the rails of your bolt sled are in place. And a side note, you do not need to grease your bolt sleds. The POM is very, very slick and there's not much friction at all between the ABS shell and the POM sled. You don't need to slather everything in grease. Doing so usually just results in your blaster getting very dirty over time as the grease picks up a lot of like gunk. So the drier the inside of your shell, the cleaner it will be. So let's take our catch and trigger. And trigger catch springs which I have lost the trigger catch springs. Don't do that. I'm gonna snag a catch spring off of the Recon Mark II here. So with these new trigger catches, it's actually quite difficult to lose your catch springs. There we go. Okay, so new trigger catch, catch spring. You'll see these little teeth here, these 
grip the spring really well. So once this is installed, you don't have to worry about your spring shooting off when you're doing maintenance on your blaster. So to install the catch spring, you're gonna firmly press down and twist it on and it will pop on. Notice it's at an angle, just grab it and twist it around until it is straightened out somewhat. There we go. Well, that'll work. Same with the trigger. The spring just pops on, it's a little easier, just like that. So I like to do the catch first. And there's a recess here where the uh, surface that catches on the plunger is. So what happens now is this plunger, this metal plunger body is going to protrude into the trigger catches track and will press up on this surface while priming. So I'm gonna tilt this up at an angle. I'm gonna slide that in and it's gonna go into its slot. And then the plunger body interlocks with the trigger catch or it overlaps with the trigger catch. From here, push down on the spring and pop it in. Well, actually I'm gonna go spring side first and pop it in like that. So <clears throat> once you're here, make sure it moves up and down and make sure your spring is not folded. It should be straight up and down. Next to the trigger, it just drops right in like so. And these are all the major components of the uh, hybrid kit installed in the retaliator except the spring. Um, I like to do the spring last. It simplifies things and prevents the plunger body from lifting as you're trying to close the shell. So what I'm gonna do is drop the shell on. Okay, so with the shell on, you'll notice it's not closing. So what happens a lot of the time is the magazine released gets off, offset from the opposite side. So you're gonna pinch the shell and then work the magazine release and it will just drop into place. If you feel like you, um, it's not going together, do not force it, just open it up. Sometimes the plunger body will lift out. You'll just have to reset that. So from here, you take your spring, split the back of the shell and just work it onto the plunger, <coughs> onto the plunger tube. And we'll take our back cap and the first part I like to screw down is the back cap. Because this keeps your shell together. And there we go. I'm going to quickly tighten down the screws. I've left some screws out of this particular shell. Because we open it quite often. So with this kit, you can't really function test before screwing down your screws. There's no way around that. Okay, so now we have the kit installed. You can feel the triggers move smoothly when you pull it all the way. You should be able to feel the catch moving up and down. Inspect, make sure your bolt sled is in the rails on each side. Everything's tight and we can test prime. So with all the locks out, you don't want to dry fire because there's no air restrictor. So it's primed successfully. We're gonna hold the slide, pull the trigger, let it come forward slowly. Now, because this has a partial seal, you can actually close the slide, plug the barrel and test fire. You'll notice that the plunger, uh, plunger is not just slamming in to the plunger tube. There's enough of a cushion of air that prevents um, unnecessary wear and tear when dry firing, as long as you plug this. And that's similar to what happens when there's a dart in. So even though most of the force is transferred directly to the shell while firing, as long as you're not dry firing with no dart, um, it's not gonna damage your shell over time. All right, so let's take a look at a Recon Mark II. I have the kit already installed, except I had to take off that spring, go ahead and just pop it in.
back into place. So there's a few minor differences. First of all, the trigger. It's different than the retaliator's trigger. Everything else goes in the same. The actual trigger installation is the same. The spring pops on, it drops in. The one thing you really need to watch out for with a Recon Mark II is the magazine release. So this is a two, there are three parts here. There's the spring, this little gray piece, and the orange mag catch. You have to make sure you don't lose that gray piece. If you do, this will no longer be under spring tension. You'll have a hard time putting your shell together and you won't be able to um, reliably hold mags in place or eject them. So watch out for that. Um, another minor difference, the Recon Mark II shell. I have found that the plastic is a little bit less tough than the blue plastic in the Retaliators. I don't know why that is. And up here where the plunger body braces against the shell, there is no rubber pad um, from the factory. It's just the shell material. Uh, this one hasn't really shown many signs of stress, so I think it's fine. But just keep in mind that if you want to put a little pad there, you can. The Recon Mark II primes more smoothly than a Retaliator, as it is a more updated design. And it has a spring guide in the back, unlike the Retaliator. So if you install this kit in Recon Mark II, it performs, um, the muzzle velocities are the same, but it primes a little smoother and has a different mag catch and trigger. Other than that, it is exactly like installing the kit in a Retaliator. So that is the hybrid kit for the Recon Mark II and Retaliator. This is, we're very excited about this kit. It performs extremely well. It, uh, with the 7kg spring, we have great muzzle velocities and high accuracy with this new barrel. So I hope this uh, video was informative and thanks for watching.